Hello my friend, today we will take a look at some of my favorite cameras that I recommend for traveling in 2021. Last year was actually very good when it comes to new camera releases. This year's list contains no less than 7 new cameras and 5 returning cameras. My main criteria for an ideal travel camera are the size to performance ratio, versatility and lens selection. In this video we will take a look at the cameras that are in my opinion the best when it comes to these three criterias. The first camera on the list is Sony A7C. This is a rather obvious choice. A7C retains majority of A7 III features despite being a much smaller camera and it even offers some very nice updates. First of all, the size to performance ratio is outstanding. A7C is just 12.4 cm wide and it only weighs 509 grams. Considering what it can do, it is an extremely compact camera. It has a great full frame backside illuminated sensor, flawless autofocus and in-body image stabilization. The battery life is by far the best in class and it supports pretty fast USB-C charging. It is equally good for both stills and video. It doesn't have the latest video specs, but it still produces beautiful downsampled 4K video with flawless autofocus. The price for the compact size is a small viewfinder, one SD card and fewer control elements. All of those are in my opinion reasonable sacrifices for getting this kind of package. I use my A7C with 20mm f1.8 G most of the time. This is one of my favorite camera and lens combinations overall. Sony also offers a very decent 28-60mm f4-5.6 to lens, which can turn your a7C into a point and shoot package. Sony a7 III is still a great option for those who want two SD cards and more controls. It is a bit larger, but it is still one of the smallest full frame cameras on the market. Both a7C and a7 III are in my opinion a great options for those who want excellent full frame image quality in a very portable package. Fujifilm offers a lot of X-mount APS-C cameras and a lot of them are also very suitable for traveling. Let's start with the X-S10. This is in my opinion the best hybrid camera under $1000. Like all X-mount cameras on this list, it uses a well-known X-Trans 4 sensor paired with X-Processor 4. This is still very new technology, so the sensor is backside illuminated and it has pretty fast readout. Despite that it is a very small camera, it still has an in-body image stabilization and very complete feature set. That in-body image stabilization is actually very effective. The autofocus is not quite on Sony level, but it is still sufficient for majority of situations. The video specs are very good. It shoots real 4K DCI downsampled from 6.2K at 200 megabits per second. Fujifilm is also well known for the film simulations. These are especially useful on the go when you don't have much time for post-production. XS10 is very well built. This is a pragmatic package, so it has the usual PASM dial instead of dedicated dials. The grip is also very decent for this size category. The only compromise or maybe weakness is the battery life, which is rated for 325 shots. You can get a lot more than that, but the battery life is not great. The viewfinder is also quite small, but that is to be expected. The second x 4 camera on my list is the X-E4. This is Fujifilm's minimalist package. This one is more oriented towards the shooting experience. It still uses the same sensor and CPU, so the image quality is also the same. X-E4 is again an extremely small camera. It is just 12 cm wide and it weighs 364 grams. XE4 has no in-body image stabilization because it stays true to the XE concept, as I have explained in my review. The build quality is really good with this one. It is almost on par with X100V and it also retains a lot of X100V shooting experience. It has a great 1.62 million dot display, but the EVF is quite small. Other than that, it is a lot of fun to use, especially if you pair it with a 27mm f2.8 Mark II pancake lens. 
XT4 is currently the X-Mount flagship and the most feature-packed X-Mount camera. It still has the x trans sensor, but it is paired with very effective in-body image stabilization, great video specs and much larger battery. X-T4 offers a good balance between the shooting experience and ease of use. It has plenty of controls, including dedicated exposure dials and 4-way pad. The build quality is also very good, except the rotating screen mechanism. The EVF and monitor on the X-T4 are very good. The autofocus also works well after the firmware updates. It can shoot 4K DCI up to 60p internally in 10 bit, so it is one of the most capable mirrorless video cameras. Fuji also has some versatile lenses, such as the 16 to 80 or their compact f2 primes. XT4 also looks great in my opinion, and it is a lot of fun to use, so it is still one of my favorite cameras. Sony APS-C cameras are still a valid option for traveling. I probably shouldn't like these cameras too much because they use a lot of 2016 technology, but the thing is that every time I use one, I'm just getting really nice stills and video. A6400 is in my opinion the package that makes the most sense. It uses quite an old 24 megapixel sensor, but it provides excellent image quality and it has by far the best autofocus in class. Sony is still a master of packaging, so the size to performance ratio on A6400 is excellent. The build quality is also very good, and I even like the controls, considering that it is a very small camera. 4K video is another major strength of A6400. It also has a front-facing screen, and I think that this is by far the most practical solution. It doesn't use the latest technology, and it also doesn't have in-body image stabilization, but at that price point, there is actually not much that I can criticize. A6600 is a bit of hard sell at that price point and the A6100 misses picture profiles, but the A6400 is a very good package with reasonable price. Regarding the compact cameras, I think that there are also good choices for traveling. As I've concluded in my iPhone 12 Pro vs Sony ZV-1 video, it still makes sense to buy 1-inch sensor camera for some users. Two compact cameras that I recommend at the moment are Sony ZV-1 and Sony RX107. ZV-1 was basically made to match the needs of modern content creators. It combines the latest 1-inch sensor with 24-70mm equivalent f1.8-2.8 to lens. The whole package is extremely small. It also adds the rotating screen, which I don't like of course, but the target customers will probably appreciate that. The image quality is very good thanks to the very modern 20 megapixel backside illuminated 1 inch sensor. This sensor has a very solid dynamic range and reasonable low light performance. Importantly, the autofocus on ZV-1 is basically perfect. It is extremely fast, accurate and smooth. The image stabilization generally works well, but it doesn't work that great for vlogging in-your-face shots. The battery life is similar to other 1-inch cameras and the user interface feels quite outdated in 2020. Unfortunately, it also still uses micro USB. Despite that, I think that the ZV-1 is currently the best compact 1-inch sensor camera on the market even for non-vloggers. An alternative is Sony RX107. This is a more premium compact camera with 28 to 200 mm equivalent lens. It also has a viewfinder and I prefer the tilting screen on RX107. The rest of the specs are very similar to ZV-1. Having that kind of focal range in such a small package is definitely appealing. Of course, you can't expect G Master optical performance in this kind of package, but image quality is better than I would expect at that size. If you are looking for that kind of focal range, RX107 is definitely a valid alternative to ZV-1. So these are the 8 cameras that I recommend for all-round travel use and now we can move to more specialized cameras. The first one is Fujifilm X100V. This is a fixed lens camera with 35mm full frame equivalent lens. It uses the same internals as the other Fuji X mount cameras on this list, but it has more vintage feel to it and for me personally even more of that Fuji factor. 
The lens is very decent, it has bright f2 aperture and very good optical qualities. One more thing that makes it special is a hybrid optical and electronic viewfinder. I actually like to use the optical viewfinder a lot. With a fixed lens, it is less versatile than interchangeable lens cameras. Despite that it is mainly a steel camera, it still has full XS10 video specs, so it shoots great 4K DCI video. The autofocus is also very good. If I go on a trip or a holiday without a need to test any photography equipment, X100V is actually my first choice for personal usage. The second specialized camera on this list is Sony A7S III. This is a great choice for travel filmmakers or even travel vloggers with a high budget. A7S III basically offers everything that I have ever asked for in a 4K mirrorless camera. It can shoot 4K up to 120p in 10-bit 422 internally. You can also get very solid ProRes RAW files through the HDMI. A7S III uses a new backside illuminated 12 megapixel full frame sensor. As I've explained in my review, it provides a similar look to Ari Alexa, which is a very good thing in my opinion. The video is not as detailed as downsampled video, but it looks more natural or filmic. A7S III uses Gen 4 body with larger grip. The in-body mist stabilization has also been improved and I can say that it is very solid in A7S III. The new touch-based menu is also a big step up. A7S III uses by far the best EVF of all cameras, but the display could have been better. Basically my only major complaint about the A7S III is the fact that if you want to shoot 4K DCI, you need to use an external recorder. Importantly, you are getting all of these specs in a very small package weighing just 700 grams, so I highly recommend it for travel filmmaking. The third special camera on my list is Fujifilm GFX100S. Admittedly, this is not the most typical travel camera, but there are some good reasons to include it on this list. The first reason is size to performance ratio. It is not a small camera in absolute terms, but it is tiny for what it can do. The highlight of GFX100S is 102 megapixel backside illuminated 44mm sensor. GFX100S puts together uncompromised image quality and usability of a normal hybrid mirrorless camera. It has very effective in-body image stabilization and face detection autofocus system. Those are a huge upgrade over every other 44mm plus camera. It can also shoot 4K DCI video in 10-bit 422 internally. The video quality is also outstanding and it might be the most detailed video of all cameras that I've ever tested. GFX100S also has the best display that is being used on a camera and very solid battery life. Some of the GFX lenses are also quite manageable for traveling. 50mm f3.5 is probably my most favorite. If you simply want to capture the world in the best possible quality, GFX100S is the obvious choice. I will also include my two favorite consumer or action cameras on this list. The first one is obviously DJI Pocket 2. I wasn't sure about the couple of the specs, but I can say that DJI has made it work. Because of the switch to 20mm focal length, it is basically a different type of camera than the Osmo Pocket 1. I think that 20mm is a good compromise between neutral 26mm focal length of Osmo Pocket 1 and the 16mm ultrawide lens that the vloggers were asking for. It still looks much more classy than action camera footage and it makes a lot of sense in combination with a gimbal. 20mm focal length is easier to stabilize, so the walking with Pocket 2 looks much better than with Osmo Pocket 1. Despite that it uses a 64 megapixel sensor, DJI was able to get the video processing right and the video quality is excellent. The new function is digital live cropping, which is basically a better form of digital zoom. To my surprise, it is very usable. The colors are also very nice and the new DCINELEC setting is properly flat. I generally think that Pocket 2 is a great all-round camera for traveling and I intend to use it a lot this year if the situation allows it. 
The second consumer camera on my list is Insta360 ONE R. ONE R is a modular system that has brought some great innovations. Especially the one inch mod is very impressive. That one can shoot beautiful 5.3K video, which is class above any other action camera. 360 mod can turn it into 360 camera, and 4K mod is good for all round use. It uses gyro metadata, which makes it possible to utilize excellent flow state stabilization and reframe the footage after it was shot. There is a lot to talk about with 1R, so if you are interested, full review will be linked in the description. More firmware updates will also be coming soon, so I will revisit 1R in upcoming weeks. So these were the best travel cameras that I recommend in 2021. As always, which one is the best for you depends on your preferences. I hope that this video was useful and it will help you choose the right camera for your travels. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.